He's the voiceover studio engineer of the stars in Los Angeles, California. A Virginia Tech grad with a knowledge of recording studios unmatched in his field. He's a voice actor from Buffalo, New York, with 30 years experience in recording studios and behind the mic. He solves people's home voiceover studio problems in the blink of an eye. Together, there's no studio problem they can't solve, and they'll do it for you tonight. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. Now, live from a basement in Buffalo and an office in L.A., here are Dan Leonard and George Whittem. Good evening, the world. I'm Dan Leonard in the East. And I'm George Whittem in the West. And together we are East East West West Audio Audio Body Body Shop. Shop. Oh, oh, it's so good to be back. It is. (laughs) This is the first time we've done this show, well, apart for, <laughs> for a while. I know. Uh, it's been a month, yeah, hasn't it? it? It's yeah. I think it's been a month since we've. I've been back down here mm-hmm. uh, in the, uh, the the black hole of Calcutta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we and, had two on location. Yeah, and then which, you took a road trip, and we did one on the hangout. So yeah, it has been a month. Yeah, it was, and it. But California was a great trip. That was a lot of fun. It was great hanging out with you, and it was great hanging out with. Uh, all of the all of you that were at Voice Twenty Twelve and all our special guests yeah. that were that joined us at the Don LaFontaine Lab, because, it was a blast. And especially my mom, yeah, mom, who really enjoyed that. That's cool. Yeah, um, you know, and and she and she was very impressed with all of our friends and people who are dedicated fans of our show. So that's neat. Anyway, <laughs> but uh, how, how's things going with you? Are you and Ella on the beach a lot? Oh yeah, actually, I've got a pretty bad sunburn to show for it. Actually, uh-huh. here, check this out. Let's see. Can you see that? I can. Oh goodness! <laughs> and, yet, and you being such a, a lily white person. Oh that's, man, that's... I got the good farmer tan. See, look at look at where the uh, burn start. You know, the tan oh, stops cool. and the burn starts. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's <laughs> so. That, that's, that's from what go- sunscreen is for. I know. Well, that's not from going to the beach. See, when I'm at the beach with Ella, usually I'm I'm uh, wearing a shirt. I don't go shirtless that often, just to play in the water a little bit. But I'm you know shirt back on. But right. on Saturday, I took Ella to the local pool, Santa Monica City's uh, swimming pool, which swimming center, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. We'd never gone before, and so that's the first time this year that I've sat, you know, in a pool of water up to my shoulders, you know, for yeah. like almost two hours, and that's what did it. You know, I was like, "Duh, what the heck was I thinking?" Man. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, I, I I had a wonderful afternoon. You did? Did you? I, did you? I heard you go to the, went to the opera. What did you yeah. see? La Boheme. <laughs> oh, I, I think you should be handing out, you know, t- Kleenex as you're walking in for that. Hankies. Yes. You know, Mimi dies at the end. No. A lot of people die, don't they? <laughs> no, only one person only dies. Only one dies? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. It was a lot faster than I thought, but it was an excellent production of it. You cool. know, those that say there's no culture in Buffalo, we have opera. They haven't been there. Well, you're going to have to come. I know. It, it's uh, that may happen. We'll see. We'll see That's how true. the year turns out. We we need. I need to get you down here to help me strip this place out and make this thing even better. See that now. everybody? Dan even hires me. Well, you're. But we didn't say anything about hiring. Actually, no, I didn't. I just I'm <laughs> buy a plane ticket. Come hang out with me for the weekend. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, anyway. I'd be happy to. Actually, I'm excited to see your studio's next evolution. Yes, because it's, you know, a, a friend of ours gave, you know, interviewed me this week, and she mm-hmm. was she's writing an article for, uh, or actually doing a, um, uh, a webinar for for uh, uh, our good friends and one of our sponsors, mm-hmm. uh, VoiceOver Extra, about the use of your studio and say if it's got a double use like as a bedroom or something like that. Yeah. And she wants to interview me about that, and she was actually sitting next to us at the banquet, and, and I'm like, are you kidding? This place is a death trap. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway, let's get into the meat of the matter. These people don't give a darn what the heck we do during our regular days, do you? Um, but yeah, really. anyway, we've got things we want to talk about tonight, especially our special guest. We totally forgot about him. I don't know how we could do that. Our special guest tonight is Uncle Roy. Roy Yokelson is our guest tonight. He's going to talk to us about demos and his career and how you're supposed to do it right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We trust him because he actually knows what he's talking about. He has a lot of experience in a lot of different facets of voiceover. So, you know, he's definitely a, someone I would consider an authority. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, when we, we, we just, you know, I, I may, wanted to make sure we had him on the show this week because he's actually working with us with our, our Wobo stuff and lending a lot of credibility to uh, what we do because he's actually credible. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll find yeah. out. You'll find out. You'll 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 see. And mm-hmm. very shortly, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, but uh, you've got some stuff to talk about. I, I'm going to talk about uh, that analog hissing that a lot of people complain about a little bit later in the show, and then Roy will join us, and then it'll be total free for all. Exactly. You know, and and you guys can ask questions. We got some questions. We'll just have a great time. Yeah, but got anyway, a, we got a voicemail to play later. Oh, it's, a, it's a you know it's it's a classic i mean it's well it, you know it, it's i'm not going to say it's a bad question it's just it's it's the question it's let's the put it that way it's the yeah, question we'll, we'll go with that so we'll play that later okay <laughs> anyway but let's get into the meat of the matter because you know i suggested this topic but i'll let you lead it off yeah yeah well i mean dan's going to be talking about hissing later but uh you know we're going to talk about you know channel strips and, you know, there's a lot of channel strips, preamps, uh, whatever you want to call them, uh, effects chains, not, not exactly, what am I talking about? Processors, mic processors. Front end stuff. Front end stuff. There's a lot of options out there, and we see a lot of the usual suspects when we're helping out people with their, with their studios. I mean, these things come up time and time again. And uh, I'm not going to say there's a particular problem with them when used in the right, in, when in the right hands and in the right context. But for the vast majority of us voice actors who are not doing real-time uh, streaming, you know, uh, ISDN, which is the vast majority of you are not, um, like we've said before, and we've pounded this point home, I don't know how many times, that front-end processing <laughs> is generally not a good idea. It's just really not a good idea to, uh, to use it because it can, be, it can obliterate the audio in a bad, bad way. And with most of us working without headphones on, if something was screwed up, we wouldn't know it until, you know, the session was over or that whole segment you just recorded was over. And then you'd have to re-record it again because you can't undo it. You know, it's right. pr- it's printed to tape, so to speak. It's permanent. So it's a bad idea to, uh, to, to use these things in general if you've not um, had one set up professionally for you and if you're not needing the front end processing people always say well it saves a little bit of time it's you know it saves it saves maybe five to ten seconds of work time maybe i mean (laughs) however long it takes your computer to to process your audio for you after you finish that's how much time it saves but the ones that have come up lately i know dan said he's dealt with these a lot of the apex uh, 230 and I know they have a newer version called the channel or just channel. And uh, I'm not it's real channeling. F- it's channeling a devil is what it's doing. <laughs> I, don't, I haven't used the channel yet personally, so I'm not going to disparage it yet without using it. But um, first of all, all of these pieces of gear, the Aphex 230, uh, the 520 AD by Symmetrix, which is you know pretty popular if you've been in radio. In fact, if somebody has a 528E, I always ask them, how long were you in radio? <laughs> and they, 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 some, they sometimes are a little, sometimes a little defensive about it. <laughs> Wasn't that something that Harlan said a couple of weeks ago? He says, "You know, all these guys have an RE twenty, you know, like the, the one they stole from the last station they were at." Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so that's usually what I say when I see someone with a five twenty eight E a Symmetrix. Um, and then the one that I actually have been known to actually recommend a lot, which was is the DBX two eighty six A. Now I think it's called the two eighty six S. Um, you know, I used to recommend it a lot because I thought it was the simplest front end processing chain device or channel strip or whatever, the simplest and the least expensive, um, that seemed to do what it needs to do without getting in the way. Um, it's the noise gate on it is pretty usable and, uh, you know, it works pretty well. And, you know, for every person, every, every piece of gear I'm going to mention tonight, there's going to be somebody that says I use it. And I love it, or I <laughs> and a hate couple it. already, and a couple already. Right, have. right. Well, that's that's fine, because um, there's definitely going to be people that disagree with me on this. Um, but again, if anything goes wrong with this thing, or any setting is just slightly out of whack, and the thing with these knobs are is they have a tremendous amount of sensitivity. So the perfect setting is somewhere between you know 1030 and 1045 is, is you know as though you're looking on a clock right and he just has to be in that pocket or it gets you know it's totally out of whack and i can't tell you how many times i get an email or a phone call i think the latest one was from our, our friend mark cashman 
Yes, because we, 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 he called me. We, we were both involved. We were both involved. He said, yeah. Apparently, the cleaning lady was dusting in his in his magnificent studio and yeah. turned a dial. And, yeah, it's a, there's a reason why when I go to some of my clients' studios, they're disgusting because they will not allow anybody in there to clean. And uh, so we do a good cleaning once a year or we clean the board and clean everything. But uh, I can see why. I mean, the idea that just one knob getting bumped or moved changes everything and uh so we do recommend simplicity if you are if you do use an apex 230 um one feature a lot of people don't even know about or they don't even know how to make take advantage of is the built-in ad converter um that's one thing that sets the 230 and the part i think dan you have the eureka i've got this i've got the personas eureka and mine's running through a, a spit off into an optical out that goes into my imac and i everybody out there is going the spit off and a little toast link yeah, into the car yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm going to explain to you what that really means, but um, the thing is, is a lot of us have a mixing console or we're using some sort of other audio interface like an M-Box or something to get that audio from your preamp into the computer. And if you're using a modern, some PCs now have them, and every Mac, as far as I know, has it now, um, they have an optical input on the Mac. And so that input jack that normally you, you would think of as just used for, say, plugging um, a CD player in or something, um, actually it doubles as an optical input. And optical is digital. Now, most of this pro audio gear has a digital output. or Some of the digital gear, like the Aphex 230, has a digital output. But the problem often is the case is that the digital output of the Aphex 230 is what they call coaxial. So it has this jack that looks like a standard RCA plug, like the you know the same kind of jack you would use to plug uh, your your you know cassette deck into your stereo. Right. And uh, so that's the coaxial connection, and then other gear like say the iMac has an optical connection, also known as TOSLink. Now they speak the same language, but they uh, the the interfaces are different. So you have to get a little adapter box for about twenty bucks maybe. And it converts, you know, the coaxial into the optical. And that's all it does. There's no change of audio quality, no de degradation at all. It's literally bits, you know, ones and zeros out of the preamp into the computer. So if you have something like that and you do have an iMac, try going straight in with an adapter like this and um, bypass all that extra stuff in your signal chain. And you might immediately find a, a, a drastic reduction in your uh, hiss or, or your noise floor. So it, it, it can be a little cantankerous at times to set it up. You do have to look out for things like clock source, which sometimes can get messed up, especially in Pro Tools. But generally, it's, it's pretty simple to use, and it's, it's like an immediate upgrade in your signal chain without going out and buying some extra expensive piece of gear, like some like an uh, Apogee Rosetta 200 or some crazy expensive what, AD what, what converter. What do you need that stuff for anyway? You really don't. I mean, those that master records and you know, are doing like uh, major recording projects, you know, that's that's a different story where you need to squeeze every last bit of you know quality out of the audio you possibly can onto the master uh, recording. That's a different story. But you know, in the recording studio for voice acting. Um, I'm not going to say we don't need good quality, because of course we need good quality. Of course, absolutely. But there's tiers, you know, there's levels. There's, we're, we're like here, and then there's like the audiophile world up here. And, you know, to, to, to get to the audiophile level, there's a drastic difference in cost. But the quality difference is minuscule, you know, just it's minuscule. It you really know, it is. just doesn't, it, you really don't need to spend that last extra couple thousand dollars to get the best possible ad conversion so i yeah. mean we're big dan and i are both big on good enough but knowing what not, is good enough not just good enough because good enough is generally a lot better than not good enough yeah does that make any sense no it probably doesn't <laughs> good but, is good enough let me put that yeah, way. but with modern digital recording stuff if you have a yeah. clean audio chain that's digital from the get-go off a good microphone, that's pretty much all you need if you don't do a lot of front-end processing. Mm -hmm. And those of you who don't know how to do front-end processing, as I always say, if you don't know what something does, you probably don't need it. Yeah. 
uh, because and somebody else setting it up for you, and that's that's actually what led to this discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, a situation where a, a certain coach in a certain city, I won't mention the city or the coach, mm-hmm. but if any of the people I talk to are watching, they know who I'm talking about, was recommending the Apex uh, to people and saying, these are the settings you have to have. This guy must have been in radio for, you know, back in the 50s and the 60s or something because right. the settings were for loud radio commercials. Right. Irrelevant today. That's not what producers are looking for. Now we'll ask Roy about that later on, and he'll mm-hmm. say, "You guys know what the hell you're talking about." <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, there's different uses for different genres of material. As you but say, the, this is one man's opinion. As one man's or one two man's opinion. Two man's opinion. Now Roy's <laughs> opinion is important too. But, yeah. um, but the thing is, is that you're not on radio in 1970. It's not your responsibility to make your commercials, if you're doing commercials, loud like that. That's the job of the processing in a radio station. And people don't seem to get that. And there's some producers that don't seem to get that. Yes, you're supposed to make your voice compressed and when you're doing multi-tracking and you're putting your voice on top of a music track and stuff like that. But that's not what you do on the front end, and that's causing people all sorts of problems if you don't know what all those settings are. Yeah. yeah. So it's much better to do everything in post where you have complete control where it's like, well, that gate's not quite tight enough. Okay, we can tighten it up. You know, half a dB or or and and adjust the you, all sorts of things you can do with it. Yeah, but I, I, the other reason why I don't feel like it's worth spending that that next tier to go up, you know, in, in quality of say AD converter, is this the home studio has a certain noise floor. It's incredibly rare that I've seen a home studio have more than a, dy- a usable dynamic range of say 60 dB. I mean, if you can get a 60 dB dynamic range in a home studio above above the noise floor, you're doing pretty darn good. And the thing is, th- what you're getting out of these really high-end 80 converters and 24-bit recording and all that stuff is 130 dB of dynamic range. You just don't need it. <laughs> you're not using that last 70 uh, dB or so of a dynamic range because it's all noise. So really, that's, to me, the reason why it's just, at the end of the day, it's just not worth it. Right. All right. I think we pretty much smothered that we one. We put that one to bed. We did until next week. Till somebody else says, "Hey, I got this Apex 230. How do I set this thing up? Use exactly. it as a doorstop." Yeah, exactly. That's, that's my favorite thing. Wait, that. D- anyway. D- DFW Cliff. That oh, that must Cliff. be Cliff. That's Cliff. Yeah. Yes. Cliff said, "Higher, George." What were you referring to, Cliff? He was he was saying higher because we were talking about the difference. In oh, 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 oh. He was like, "Oh, go higher than that." Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, you know, it, I, yeah. You know the the difference. Five hundred to a thousand dollars in difference in cost is maybe five percent increase in quality that ne- none of us can hear. Right, and then maybe. from you can go from a thousand to five thousand for right. AD, and then it's like a one percent difference. Yeah, you know? and for you know, and for something that you know that's like you know, it's coming out of laptop speakers. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. and you know, Dave Business no. said, "I'm wondering about using the gate." No, a gate. No. Anthony said, "I'm wondering about using the gate." I'm finding now and more and more that I like doing the gate in post better than the 286A's gate because the 286 has like two knobs to control the gate and it's pretty ham handed. You know, you can, yeah. when, when it's, when the gate is on, it's fully on. It's like, you know, silence. And I don't like that. I like being able to control the ratio of the gate so that when the gate is on, it doesn't go all the way to silence. You can have a little bit of background noise, a little room tone. That's ACX right. is really a, they're sticklers about that. They, they hate when you, when your room tone disappears between uh, words. So watch out yeah. for that. Yeah. We're going to have to get the guys from ACX on here mm-hmm. one of these days and have them talk about it. Yeah. Anyway, we've got a lot more coming up tonight. We've got my tip of the week coming up. Uncle Roy is going to be with us shortly. Can't wait for that. That's going to be a laugh riot. Maybe we might actually be serious about something. And we've got <laughs> all sorts of other things. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on East West Audio Body Shop after this. Hey, my name is Bob Ball. I'm a voice actor and host of Pop Quizzical. Sure, sure, sure. I hear you thinking, Bob, what is this Pop Quizzical you speak of? Well, I'll tell you. It's a fun and funny, single-themed, 10 to 15-minute audio quiz. It comes out every other week right here on the internets. 
You know, that thing that just about everything cool flows from. You know, pictures of cats, videos of dogs, and yes, Pop Quizzical. It's available on iTunes and wherever fine podcasts are sold. And it's easily found, too. Go to bit.ly slash popquizzical. There's also a companion website at popquizzical.com with daily quiz questions and every Friday over on the Pop Quizzical Facebook page. It's a freebie Friday. Free stuff throughout the day. From The Muppet Show to James Bond to St. Patrick's Day, the Pop Quizzical Podcast has a little bit of everything for you. Challenge your mind and your funny bone with Pop Quizzical. Class dismissed. This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Two guys I love spending Sunday nights with. And we're uh, back. Yes, Frank and Mike is still with us. <laughs> your 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 sidekick. I love it. I I really. I mean, it's you know they always say you know you, you want to be able to talk to somebody when you're doing voiceover and stuff. Well, just make the microphone a person. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. It they is. should make I little uh, masks and googly eyes and like little <laughs> things you can dress up your mic with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're gonna talk to something with googly googly eyes going. The 1937. No, right, right. Second, it's not going to work. <laughs> anyway, but no, Frank and Mike has has survived. He was in storage for about a month there, and he was very happy to get out. <laughs> he's sounding and good. He's sounding good. He's sounding very good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, actually, Roy complimented it. So I take that as a a big compliment. That's right. Anyway, it's time for my tip of the week, and it sort of dovetails with what we were just talking about. So why don't we just roll that, and we'll come back into that discussion afterwards. All right. What's that hissing sound? Is it Niagara Falls? My grill leaking. Nope, it's a major nemesis to beginners in voiceover. Hissing. What is it? Why are you getting it? And how do you avoid it or get rid of it? In acoustics, noise is usually referred to as an objectionable sound that's unwanted. In more technical terms, a sound that's added unintentionally to recording is audio noise, like audio hiss, which is usually created in an electronic mode of some sort. Sound waves are formed by a chain of analog sine waves. The characteristics of sound depend upon a combination of blending these sine waves. This determines whether the sound will be pleasant or unpleasant in listening. While recording, audio noise that you used to hear on analog cassette tapes can get on your pristine digital recordings too. As we've been discussing here, in modern digital recordings, the main source of noise is due to perhaps the wrong equipment or having poor wiring, which introduces low humming noise that we talked about a few weeks ago, and what we call analog broadband hiss. The most important factor with noise, of course, is your room acoustics. But what about this hissing? In electronic devices, hiss is often caused when random electrons deviate from their intended path under the influence of heat, which you get in analog transistorized equipment. These deviated electrons manipulate the output signal voltage and thus an audio noise is created, like hiss. Hiss can also be due to environmental factors like air conditioning, fans, lag falls, etc. Generally, that hiss comes from one source, though, an analog part of your audio chain. What are the analog links in your audio chain? First, your microphone. It's analog all the way. It takes physical sound waves and converts them to analog voltage variations. Good microphones have what we call low self-noise. The cheaper you go, generally the more noise coming down the line with your voice. There's also preamps. Cheapo preamps are a major culprit. 
they're also analog, especially if they have a vacuum tube somewhere in their circuitry. We're finding more and more that for doing dry voice work, the preamps in most major brand digital interfaces are perfectly good for a home studio. So learn to trust them. Third, the hiss may not be on your actual recording. Depending on how you play back, Okay. 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 <laughs> what? All right. Small technical difficulty. You, you guys, you got to understand. It's two cans, you know, two geeks and a string trying to put this show together. <laughs> I like that better. Two geeks you know, and but, a string. Yeah. So we're, you know, occasionally, yeah, a little glitch. You know, I'm doing a video here. Where I send it to a Dropbox. George puts it on there. Occasionally, it glitches for some reason. We'll just blame Ustream. It's got nothing to do with that. Exactly. Let's see if I can get it to pick up where we left off. Here. Oh, okay. Because you remember see. you made two cuts of the video? I have a second one. Oh. Let's see if this one works. Actionable sound that's unwanted. In more technical terms, sound that's added unintentionally to recording is audio noise, like audio hiss, which is usually created in an electronic mode of some sort. Sound waves are formed by a chain of analog sine waves. The characteristics of sound depend upon a combination of blending these sine waves. This determines whether the sound will be pleasant or unpleasant in listening. While recording, audio noise that you used to hear on analog cassette tapes can get on your pristine digital recordings too. As we've been discussing here, in modern digital recordings, the main source of noise is due to perhaps the wrong equipment or having poor wiring, which introduces... I never I the bottom line here, kids, you want to have a digital small audio chain. That's why, George, we were just talking about it. You don't want to have a cheapo preamp. Everybody's like, got to have a preamp. Well, each one of those, those interfaces that I showed before, uh, like the, the Epigee 1 and the Duet and uh, the Focusrite 2i2, which uh, you know we've been looking at. I, 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 I'm hearing great things about that. And some people say, eh, everybody's an expert. Mm -hmm. Everybody's only an expert on what their ears hear, and right. they're not and not the only ears out there. But the good digital interfaces don't ha are totally digital. You put your mic right into that, and you've solved a lot of the analog problems that we were talking about with the AFX 230 and the DBX and those sorts of things. Yeah, finish, finish out the video here. I got another player here. Oh, okay, cool. All low self noise. The cheaper you go, generally the more noise coming down the line with your voice. Yeah. There's also preamps. Cheapo preamps are a major culprit. They're also analog, especially if they have a vacuum tube somewhere in their circuitry. We're finding more and more that for doing dry voice work, the preamps in most major brand digital interfaces are perfectly good for a home studio. So learn to trust them. Third, the hiss may not be on your actual recording. Depending on how you play back your audio, if you play it back from an analog line out from your computer, there'll be some hiss. The best way to avoid hiss? The use of proper recording levels. By setting the recording levels high, it's possible to mask that background noise, which is always there. A high level of input not only masks that noise, but it also gives a better signal-to-noise ratio. However, of course, very high levels can cause the signals to clip, resulting in distortion. So set the level at about minus 6 dB, between minus 6 and maybe minus 4. This allows enough headroom and also avoids distortion. But more importantly, it makes sure that your voice is louder than that hiss. And that's my tip of the week. There we Woo. go. Oh, my. Oh, geez. So you were saying. So I was saying, you know, but that, you know, that was one of the things. It was a couple points I wanted to make there. One was that, you know, a lot of people, I got hiss in my audio. And they'll send it to me. I don't hear any hiss. You know, what are you listening to it on? Well, I'm listening yeah. to it on, you know, my old Sony tape recorder. Yeah, the, uh, the, monitor, <laughs> the monitor chain is a big part of it. Remember that, remember that fellow the other day who sent in a clip and he said, you know, I think I sound too sibilant. 
and like, uh, based on what you know, you had to, what what do you what what's that sibilance based on? What you're hearing, or what's really on the tape? Really, and he and when I listened to it on my KRKs, and I'm like, I don't hear any sibilance. Sounds great to me. Yeah. So he was just being too self critical. So yeah, yeah well, that's which, why it's which is easy to do. Yeah, that's why it's important to have meta people. That's Latin <laughs> for outside. Uh, <laughs> somebody, somebody who who uh, who n- understands this. Guys like you, me, Roy, mm-hmm. uh, and a few others. I can count them on one hand. Uh, <laughs> that can really, really are listening to this stuff and understand specifically what it's supposed to sound like. And Roy's going to talk about that in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, to really hear that. Now, the other thing I didn't mention in there, one of the things that really causes a lot of hiss is older USB mics. Mm-hmm. The new ones, the new ones like like our friend the the Epigee uh, mic, is uh, excellent. Yeah, they've made huge strides in the preamp circuitry, the AD converters, everything. It's just yeah, they've taken it up a huge notch. And I have to I have to say it's in thanks in part to the iPad. Um, yep. Because of the demand being there to have a product that can plug into an iPad without any ex- extra gear, if it wasn't for that demand, they would have never have made something you know that worked that well. So that's right. Well, enough of this stuff. Although uh, for some reason, you guys just seem to want to hear us talk. I mean, this is this is how the show started. You and I are just talking at a booth at Voice Twenty Ten, and people are like, they're all like gathering around. Maybe we should make a show out of it. Maybe we should. And here we are, episode 54. 54. Holy crap. That's right. All right. Anyway, we've got a great guest coming up. He is going to blow everything we said just completely out of the water. Or he's going to totally agree. We'll find out. Our guest coming up (laughs) is Uncle Roy. Roy Yokelson will be with us right here on East West Audio Body Shop. So you stay right where you are. We'll be right back. This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Now back to Dan and George. And we're back here on East West Audio Body Shop and time for our special guest. And, uh, whoa, that's a nice piece. What are you up there, Roy? What are you up to there, Roy? Oh, 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 I didn't know I was on. (laughs) Hi I'm there. Polishing <laughs> up the old Emmy there. <laughs> it's Sunday, it's time heavy, to polish the Emmy. That's it's right. Heavy, heavy blunt object. You could really do damage to somebody. I know. Yeah, yeah I've I've much. I've heard stories of people are, you know, they're at the banquet, the Emmy banquet, and they have it under their chin and they go down like this and it gets oh, stuck in their chin. There's two very pointy things here. you know, and they're just the right, you know distance for your eyes so in other words if you kept that in your car you, you'd have to uh, register it as a concealed weapon with didn't state. your father ever say don't run with the emmy because you could poke <laughs> your eye out something exactly. like that. i've heard something like that how the heck did you get that emmy besides uh pawn, yeah. pawn shop i know it wasn't yeah. a pawn shop how'd you get that emmy 19 i didn't cbs sports entered it for me uh i worked in the 1992 uh winter olympics on the uh, bobsled event, there was a little cartoon that they did, so I did sound design. And Bob from Bob and Ray did the voiceover, actually. Oh. And um, I, w- I stopped working at a facility. I phoned in for my messages, and the message said, your Emmy is ready. <laughs> <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? I didn't enter anything for an Emmy. <laughs> and then 
CBS paid for it, so here it is. Hello. There it is. We Fabulous. love that. Yeah. CBS Sports. Yeah. First off, Uncle hi, Roy. Hi, hi. Welcome to East West Audio Body Shop. We've been wanting to have you on for a long time. And uh but I'm curious. Because we all call you Uncle Roy. You're not my Uncle Roy. Maybe you are. We might be related somewhere, you know, maybe back in Russia somewhere. Who knows? But um, where did you get the name Uncle Roy? How did, how did that start? We have a long, we have, we have lots of time. Oh. Uh, <laughs> as much as you want. Ask, there's no network. Go for it. Oh, right. They usually ask, uh, the three things they ask is, where did the name Antland come from, which is where the uncle part comes from uh-huh. when was the last time you got a haircut and how many t-shirts do you own That's <laughs> uh, ask questions okay so which one do we ask first again i lost track uh, oh the uh, the <laughs> uncle roy one uncle yeah oh, no, the there uncle was roy a one. character with along with antland which was a high school entity along with antland came a character named uncle Anty. so i took uh-huh. on the persona of uncle Anty. And there was the Antland band and everything. The guy with the guitars, he was uh, the, we. The guy with the van, he was Antland Van Lines, and I was Antland Recording Studio because I had the the equipment and everything. Um, so Uncle Anty. Then when I got into business for real, I wasn't going to be called Uncle Anty. That was that was like my college radio uh, thing was Uncle Anty. Right. So then it became Uncle Roy, and then my sister had kids, and then it was really Uncle Roy. So you know, there's a, there is a real, you know, you are you are a real uncle. You are a real yeah. uncle. Right. I have two nieces and a nephew. Excellent. Proof. All right. So we can yeah. cross off the first question. Okay. How did how did you get started in the business? Here are the answers. We could just put the answers up here. <laughs> there we go. All right. Let's see, wiping that one off. Okay. <laughs> That's not how I got started in the business. All right. So everybody, everybody all at once, how, how did, did you get, get started, started in, in the voiceover? Business? Oh, well, that's the second question. That's the second that's question. question. How I got started in the business, Harry Como's Papa Loves Mambo. It's <laughs> not on your answer sheet. There is it, Dan. Yeah, I really didn't know it isn't. I wanted to surprise you with something. Okay, good. I, I had a record player, and I used to play Perry Como's Papa Loves Mambo over and over and over and over. It drove my parents crazy. So my father put in a headphone jack, and there I was. And that was how it started. That's how I got in the business. <laughs> as silly, <laughs> that's, as silly that's as it? that, that's, it all started with a pair of headphones. Uh, you know, that was it. No, then my father gave me a tape recorder when I was five, and I was the kid on the block with the puppet stage in the basement. So... We didn't know it was the right way to do it, to pre-record your dialogue and then move your puppets, but that's that's what we did. We, we were the Mickey Rooney and, and Judy Garland of, of uh, East 56th Street in Brooklyn. Wow. Always, always putting on a show. Yeah, it was innovative, just pre-record the stuff. Who would have thought? Who knew? And later in life, I got to work with a, a, a master uh, um, puppeteer named Bill Baird, who you will remember in the Sound of Music had the Lonely Goat Herd puppets. If you ah, yes. That. So I got to work with that. Very good. Good choreography, Dan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. You, you, were you in that show? No. And that's that's <laughs> one I didn't do. And now I'm glad I... Another audition lost. Yes. I'm glad I wasn't in Lobo M. I would still be crying. But... <laughs> so anyway... Um, yes. Yeah, I, I, we put on shows, and I always had a tape recorder, and just audio became my passion. Anything to do with sound, I had to, I had to fix it, I had to make it better, I had to play with it. We would forget about splicing blocks with razor blades. I, uh, when the tape broke, I had a pair of scissors and some scotch tape just to. Yeah. It wasn't creative editing. It was, oops, the tape broke, and we had to <laughs> put it back together. I've had to do that a few times with the cassette tapes. Me, Boy, that's oh, really me, tedious. Me too. Me too. I have a cassette editing block you huh. have an edit all block that's that's uh it actually worked with cassettes too is it cassette is eighth inch tape right seventh seventh, seventh. okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very close though <laughs> seventh of an inch it's i believe i believe it's a seventh of an inch or, or if it's an eighth you, you all right be, let's look it let's, up there let's see here right. yeah, what does that look like i that's about a. That's an eighth. That's an eighth. Okay. Yeah. No, you know, I guess I'm confusing it with splicing tape, which was seven thirty seconds of an inch and not a oh, quarter inch. Right, 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 right. Because he didn't want it to stick out beyond the edge of the. That's mm-hmm. right. Exactly. The guy, the 
the guys would get all sticky. So you guys are getting an idea what this interview is going to be like, right? Right. Did, did you, did, it, it gets better. <laughs> did you, right, we did, promise. Did you bring... boring? This is fascinating. What are you talking about? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Uh, so then, after college radio and all that, and my passion, uh, so I got a job as a messenger at National Recording Studios in New York City, where mm -hmm. I le learned to record jingles, and, and you learn radio production and voiceovers and sound effects. And when we were doing big jingle dates, the voiceover was just another instrument. So you'd be mixing your music down, and you know you would compress your bass, or you would limit your guitars, or whatever you would do. But whatever you would do with the voiceover as another instrument, compress it, EQ it, so that it would cut through the mix. Mm. So that's how I learned, uh, you know, how to make a radio spot. That's much. how we all learned. Well, those of us that were in radio, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, like... I wasn't, I wasn't in radio, but we were, we were producing, uh, you know, jingles and radio spots at a major recording studio. studio and you know what what was really sad about it the only microphones we had to use were neumann 47 and 48 tube mics that's all uh, uh, <laughs> hmm. until they got some 87s and stuff <laughs> man you know we were spoiled right from the beginning not like starting with like you know one of the most venerable mics yeah, of right. history yeah yeah <laughs> I, I started with a 77 dx made me sound I, 10 feet I, tall I still have one. I use it on uh, trumpets and trombones. I have one of those. Yeah, oh, yeah. Great. Ribbon mics are beautiful on brass. I yes. have one of those Birdcage uh, Altec Western Electric mics. That's a combination um, dynamic and ribbon that you can use. Oh, far out. Cool. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Like you see Sinatra singing into one of those. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Yeah. All right. So let's get into more meat here. Yeah. Because you, because. You can you can you we can talk to you forever about this stuff. People really want to hear about demos and stuff like that because everybody who's in voiceover has to have a demo, and it's going to people like you. <laughs> and hopefully. well, hopefully, yeah. Um, but what seems to be wrong with the the majority of demos that you get? What gets them in the round file really fast? There are many. <laughs> There are, it's a multi-answer, multi. Um, the first thing is, where is the personality of the voiceover person? It's, it's lost under the production somewhere. There's, the music's too loud, you know. Uh, or they just, who picked the scripts? The scripts are, are generic. Uh, they have nothing to do with the personality of the talent. The talent should, when you first start coaching... It's never too early to start finding the scripts that would be right for you, for your personality. So uh, you can't, <laughs> this is an industry no-no, and I'm, I'm making the rule right now. You can't use practice scripts. You can if you want, but it's an Uncle Roy no-no. You, you physically can, practice, yeah. Yeah, you can, mm. but it's very lazy. You can't uh, use those practice scripts on a demo. If I hear... Uh, my first games or Sesame Street in the backyard or any of those spots one more time on somebody's demo and I just heard one last week the, those spots are you know they're practices the, the coaches uh, and the demo producers need to step up and write or find material that's uh, you know uh, customized and tailored for the specific the, the the producer needs to know who the talent is and what what is what can you showcase about their personality you know the other thing that happens you put a demo on and the first spot okay and the second spot it's the same genre and the third spot it's the same well this person doesn't have any range i turn as a casting director i turn it off you know it, you really have to mix up the sequencing you really have to pick scripts that show a range. Otherwise, what are you, you're, nobody's a one-trick pony. I, I don't think. I mean, yeah. what, what know, about maybe, uh, what about contrast? I mean, should they like be you know different types of reads or or what? The only, that's that's a hundred percent correct. That's the only thing that should change is the read, not the EQ. Not the, yes, the music would change to be appropriate. But uh, there are some demo producers that go crazy with EQ, 
making each spot sound as if it was recorded in a different um, studio. I have to tell you a little tiny old school thing. The original uh, purpose, obviously, of a demo uh, reel in, in voiceovers was people would bring me their on-air commercials on cassette, on DAT, on quarter-inch tape, and say, here, make me my demo. It demonstrated actual work. So my job was to make it all sound great, all sound the same, really great, polished spots. If your demo doesn't sound like when you put the TV on, somebody mix those, uh, chances are, uh, who really knows how to produce TV and radio spots. That's what your demo has to sound like. Mm -hmm. they, they have to be real spots. Otherwise, it's a, you know, there's no casting director that's going to hear one of those demos and be fooled into thinking, oh, well, they, that must have been over at the, that other studio. That, that doesn't sound so good. It's very <laughs> bright. You know? right. I, I, think, I, think, I think that tactic is a distraction to a casting director. Suddenly, everything is uh, bright and loud, and suddenly, boom, no spot comes in sounding very muffled. And uh, that... Uh, I don't think that showcases the voice talent in the, in their best in their best uh, backdrop. Yeah. So, so, we, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Dan. yeah, we got we got a question. Tony Gettig's asking, uh, can you recommend a killer demo that we should all listen to as an example of what a great demo should sound like? Oh my God, yours, of course, right? But <laughs> no, 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 no. There are some very good demos. Um, if I could play one right now, can you? I could play it right now if you know. Tell me where to go. Oh, uh, you can play. Uh, you can play Liz uh, Denesner. Okay. Uh, you, can you can play. Uh, yeah, play Liz's demo. Now I, oh, I just have to know how to get to her website. Oh, hireliz.com. Perfect. See, she's yeah. smart. Don't use your last name when you can't spell it. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good little it. piece of uh, marketing. <laughs> that yeah, that's a good piece of marketing. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, Tip. There's a marketing tip right there. If you can't spell your last name over right. the phone, forget Yokelson, it. what the heck, heck is that? Um, English commercial demo? Sure. Okay. Well, her French one's probably yeah, good. Because, because she's bilingual, she has French also. No, she has an English commercial, English e-learning, English IVR, French e-learning, French IVR. Yeah, go, go for the English commercial. English. Okay, yeah. you got it. Here we go. Most folk. relevant here. Here's a good one. Liz owes me. This Monday night is not for cheering your favorite football team. It's for celebrating the other love of your life. We recommend a run straight to CVS Pharmacy for a Hallmark card. You don't talk to a tumor. You talk to a child. You don't reassure a heart valve. You hug Emily. The physicians at Stony Brook Children's Hospital know that the role of a pediatric hospital is different. Fast dry time and easy cleanup. Introducing the revolutionary water-based latex paint, Krylon H2O. The richest blend of cream and natural oil for ultra-moisturized skin. Dove cream oil body washes. So what do you get when you let 100 web-savvy, attention-hungry, blog-happy kids go wild with a new car? 6.5 million YouTube hits, 40.2 million impressions on Twitter, all without spending a dime. The Fiesta Movement. For every budget and taste, it worked like a cinch. With Teleflora, I sent the gift of flowers without moving an inch. De plus, les produits Renew sont étonnamment faciles à renouveler. When you join DFCU Financial, we'll be there a little French for good measure. every step of the way. DFCU yeah, you Financial, bring us plus. your life. Yeah, she threw it. She dropped in some French there towards the end, which I think is a cute idea. I'm just looking yeah. at the monitor, Dan. It looks like we're sitting next to each other. It's pretty cool. I know. And George Actually, is over, over my yeah, head. There's a great picture of you and I showing that we have great taste in clothing, actually. <laughs> yeah, do you have that picture, George? I this do. This is Fafcon uh, 3, I believe. This was in, 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 in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It's, yeah. Or I Suddenly I'm it's looking in, in this room. You're working in there, and I'm like, wait a second. I'll yeah, drag it into the shot. Okay. Okay. There you go. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> As you'll notice, we're wearing the same shirt. <laughs> Very and I much didn't know same. what you put in the thought balloons there. You had put on mine. You put on mine. We shop at Kohl's. The Kohl's, yeah. And I, you put on yours nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they took that one very quickly. <laughs> I, I guess you ran out of time then. Exactly. I, I must have. And the funny thing is, is I've, I've actually I was in 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 the D the Dominican Republic last fall, and I saw another guy wearing the exact same shirt. So that was that was me. 
It was? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I didn't know you. I didn't realize you were Dominican. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but <too>. anyway. <laughs> uh, yes. So back, yeah, to, yeah. back to the show. Do we need yeah. to hear another demo or are we good? That's, no, a, good, good. that's a good example of Excellent. showing range. Uh, appropriate uh, amount of music. The music and production do not overpower the the voice talent. It's appropriate for who she is. You hear Liz come. Anybody who knows Liz, you hear Liz. You hear her come through those spots. And is that one of yours, Uncle Uncle Roy? No, it's. I believe it's a Nancy Wolfson. Okay. I, believe, oh. I can't swear to it, but mm-hmm. I think that's a. That's a good uh, demo. So I've heard people say if you've got old material that sounds like it was, you know, off of a cassette, use it because it adds some like uh, cachet <laughs> to your. It shows that you've got a lot of history and voiceover. And is that totally BS? <laughs> you you mean like Coulter Rule putting on the spot that says uh, about the lotto? Hey, you never know. Right, you right. Mean like from the eighties. Yeah, from twenty five years ago. Oh, is there yeah, any yeah, relevance? That'll get him some work, huh? I mean, if you haven't if you haven't done any work in the last twenty years, what? Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's may at okay at the at the very end, the last spot, because may you know if they want to shut it off, they'll shut it off. Right. Throw it in but, at the very tail end. Yeah. Yeah. Any, well, anything you're any spot that you're questioning, just you know, oh, I love that spot, but uh, it doesn't really move the the reel along. I'll put it at the end. Mm-hmm. How long should a demo B. Now that one was well over a minute. Everybody says it's got to be a minute. Or you're going to lose everybody. Well, if you're really good, it doesn't really matter, I guess. The the agents like to see a, uh, a one minute spot. Um, the or industry shorter. standards or shorter, right? The industry standard seems seems to be uh, seventy five seconds, a minute fifteen, a minute twenty. If you've got a lot of range to show, well, you might need a little extra time. But you don't. We don't need to hear the punchline of the joke, and we don't need to hear. We don't need to get the whole concept of the spot. We just right. want to hear what next voice, what's the next tone, what's the next thing. So, in a commercial demo, seventy-five to eighty. In a narration demo, where you might have to spend a little more time on each piece, minute and a half, minute forty-five tops. Animation, if you've got a lot of range to show, you know. If I hear. Three seconds of a of a character and five seconds of another. I don't know if anybody can maintain those characters. Mm. So I like to hear a little Excellent dialogue point. back and forth just to know they can maintain it. Anybody can can say, "Yeah, what's up, Doc?" And, and they go, "Oh, oh, what a great, what a that's terrible bug, funny." Um, <laughs> but you, know, you get my point on that. So animation and then audio books. Each genre needs to have a good, you know, a good minute minute and a half even and when somebody's tired of hearing that genre and you know or tired of hearing that book they can turn it off but uh, on an audio book demo each genre is a separate clip you know mm-hmm. absolutely boy everybody's got a couple other questions here but they're asking oh. who's good <laughs> who's good, well, I'm good. yeah well we know you do you do it too skinny voice said uh do you build demos that are in spanish see uh, no. <laughs> I can, uh, yeah, I'm sure I can, be, I can't direct, you know, in all honesty, I wouldn't be the right director, mm-hmm. uh, first, but, but if the, if someone had directed and I got finished, uh, you know, edited tracks, yes, I could edit in, in Spanish. Uh, on my website, Adela, Adela uh, Bole of Bole, um, language services, I did her Spanish demo, uh, Phil, um, Myler, I did his uh, Brazilian demo, Spanish demo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I can I can mix any flavor demo. Right. I just can't direct in the language. Right, right. That, you could, that, you that, could that, hire Melissa Exelberth to do the Spanish direction. Hmm. See, oh, that's good to know. Next time I need to do Spanish. Yeah. I don't do Spanish, but if oh. I ever had to, I'd I'd get the X on that. Anyway, um, what about direction? I think that's something that I a, a lot of people miss when they're you know, when they're doing their demo. It's got to be well directed so you can show that you can take direction and that sort of thing, right? That that is the main thing that seems to be missing in most of these demos. There, or even if they were reading my first games or Lego or something like that, a kid spot, I don't hear the person smiling. Where's the director? I can right. you can tell if somebody's smiling. 
right. or 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 you know a compassionate spot. I don't hear it where nobody's directing, and I don't think it's that the talent can't take direction. I usually wind up saying to the talent, you know what? I think you're better than your demo, and that's really sad. Your demo doesn't show what you can do. I have some students now where we're going to be redoing their demos because it doesn't. And they went in to, to one of these facilities and paid $1,000 and walked out knowing that they kind of were taken. That hmm. dovetails into another question from question, the chat room. Right. You know, what, what can you expect to pay for one you know, 60 second demo on one genre? Fully produced with Fully direction. Produced yeah. with direction, the whole package. I, I think the range is 500 to 2,000, 3,000. Yeah. I personally am around 900. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so I'm somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have to split their profit with a separate recording studio, so right. they, you know, you're paying for that as a separate, um, uh, a separate uh, line item. Sure. Uh, the $500 demos, you know, I don't, I can't, I can't speak for them. I, I know what Nancy can do I know what I can do um, there are there are others I don't mean I don't mean that if I don't mention a, another demo producer that they're they're not good there are a, a, a you know a couple of handfuls of good demo producers out there you just what you should do it segues to one of the next uh, questions uh, or later question what a talent needs to do is really go listen to when you're picking a, a demo producer yeah or a coach Go listen to what they've produced. Go listen to those demos. Do they sound like real spots to you? Where a casting director might say, "Oh, I wonder if that was them on that spot." It, you real. That's how much you have to. And it's not that we're trying to fool anybody, but you do want them to to consider maybe that was them. It sounds like a real spot. Mm -hmm, right. And and is the production? You know, when you listen to these uh, the mixes, is the production overwhelming? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and is the processing overwhelming? Somebody sent me a demo. First three spots sounded the same, but they were so close to the mic. Uh, you know, you need to be eight inches from the mic or whatever we decided was the, was the right answer to that question. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, a foot a foot from the mic. I go a little further sometimes. Unless you're doing a very intimate spot, then get into the mic. But there's no reason to be have the mic in your face like that and no pop filter. You 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 put headphones on and listen to the demos. You are hearing pops? What what are pops doing on somebody's finished demo? Right. I've heard them. I've yeah, heard I them have too. I have too. People send me them and I filter out the pops and send it back and say, "Here, now repost it this way. This is the way I would do it." I've know? done that too. It it's it's just sloppy uh engineering, sloppy you know, if they don't produce real commercials for a living, if they haven't done that, or if they ha or if they really not qualified to produce a voiceover demo, anybody anybody can get the software. Mike Harrison always says, "Just because you own a stove does not make you a chef." Yeah, it's darn sure. <laughs> yeah, it's very true. So you can buy a microphone and software, but that you know, kids don't try this at home. Exactly. Which is well, another I point. I yeah, I yeah. think that's the most important thing there is you can't do your own demo. As, much, as long as I've been doing demos in radio, right. I know that as I'm going to do a new demo, I can't do it myself. Somebody else out there has to do, because you're going to listen to things differently. You know, Four ears are better than two, and uh, you know they, the director or producer might have another idea. You, you've rehearsed it a certain way, and now they want to hear it a different way that you hadn't even thought of. And suddenly, you know, maybe this spot is better. Uh, you know, they're listening for plosives, mouth clicks, and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, today's voiceover, they aren't necessarily striving for the skills and craft that old school voiceovers, were, you know, would have. Like, okay, you, you, the spot, nobody's running a stopwatch to see wh where the time is. You know, they record the spot. Oh, it's 31. All right, I'll take the breaths out. And, oh, it's 30. Well, that's, <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, today's, uh, today's, no, whereas the old school, they would say, oh, I know where I could shave off a half second over here, and that'll be great. And they just do that. And the next right. take is, is it. Yeah. And that's, that's okay, kids. You don't have to, don't get out your stopwatches. <laughs> Unless you have a, an eWabs uh, stopwatch. No, actually, there's the, the legendary Diane Merritt 
uh, stopwatch, oh. which of course yeah, everybody has a Diane Merritt stopwatch. And uh, not me, not yet. Oh well, then. Wow, you, you can't the have swag bag. Yeah, we'll through. <laughs> I think we're going to have to have some eweb stopwatches. The questions actually. keep coming. The announcer yeah. says, uh, yeah. "Is is the standard to expect? Is the standard to expect that the voice or the scripts? I'm sorry, that a paid demo producer, the, the thing keeps scrolling, uses on our demo shouldn't be used on anyone else's demo." Yeah, Doug asked that one. That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, you can customize. I mean, if somebody found went onto a website. Let's say you were doing toothpaste and you you like Crest or something. You went on the website and you copied and pasted some of their cell points. Um, there's no there's no law, there's no rule, but for the same demo producer to to use the same scripts on somebody else's demo, no, I think that's that's dirty pool. I've <laughs> I've never done that in my life. I, I I think I I think we're all a little more creative and resourceful than that. To just oh here's that pile of uh, scripts from so and so let's just use it on there. What if the casting director heard the two uh, demos back to back and said well what the hell's going on yeah, here? What's, what's this? Yeah really. Yeah. What, Ooh, yeah produce don't... those demos. Hmm. Mm, yeah really. What a, what about say other guys that are producing demos out there? Because I'm sure there's a lot of guys doing it, but as we all know, there's only probably a handful of people who are really good at it. Uh, in various coasts, east and west, which is mm-hmm. why we're in the east and west. What uh, what kind of advice do you have so you can you can make the enemies, not us? What advice yeah. do you have for voiceover uh, demo producers to improve their product? First thing is to know the talent. Really know them. Really make friends and know them, and know about their personality, so you can choose the right kind of scripts. It's really all about. Well, it's not all about, but I mean, in a nutshell, for me, it's about script choices and direction. The rest is pretty much up to the talent. The talent has to be able to, you know, read without sounding like they're reading. Uh, I think the demo producer owes it to the talent that if they're not ready, just because they bought a package of four coaching sessions and then we're on to demo prep and demo, if the if in the opinion of both the coach and the talent, the talent is not ready, don't go. Because I've heard the excuse, well, it's their first demo. No, no. That's why it's crappy. <laughs> That's why you let it go. <laughs> I've heard it. Uh, I I can't tell you. I'm not mentioning the facility, but um, so everybody needs to be honest with the the. Uh, with the level of ex- uh, of expectations from from each uh, each individual talent, um, don't put so much loud music and cheesy. You know, uh, a lot of producers they just they bought a library for a hundred dollars or three hundred dollars, and that's what they use on all their demos. And you know, the demos the music was recorded in 1980. And we've heard it on everybody's demos already. It's cheesy synthesizer music, whatever. Uh, you got to get a little more current with your production tools. You have to stay current. What I like to do to change things instead of that crazy EQ business that, that happens, I change microphones. I use different microphones for different kinds of reads. I use a dynamic mic for something where they might have to project a little more, where where maybe a condenser mic would be too harsh sounding. Uh, or I'll or, uh, use a ribbon mic on something that's where they can get into the mic closer and be more mellow sounding. And right. that's a good way to change a little bit of the timbre, a little bit of the quality of the of the voice vis-a-vis the recording process, but not to go crazy in post. If you're doing a telephony thing or if it's supposed to be coming out of a telephone and you want to filter it, okay, that's great. That's a production, uh, that's a production element. That's different. Right. But do you, do you uh, generally do you want people to come into your studio to do that, or can you do it remotely too? Or do, done, do you recommend that? I love people to come in um, because that's a missing element. The people, the being being able to be with people. I'm trying to do something about it. I'll talk to you about it another time. But I want to bring the people back into the equation. Right. Uh, because you get a script in an email, and then you send it out, and you've never met anybody. I mean, go to okay, we go to these events, and you meet people, but uh, your clients, your producers. So yeah, I'd rather them come in. 
just especially for, for the recording. I can I can uh, I can coach via Skype and and via phone. But for the recording, yeah, come in or let's book it, or I'll come to you and I'll bring a you know I'll bring my rig, uh, or let's book a studio, and. Uh, but I've done it both ways. I've had people book a studio, and you know, I have them on Skype so I can see their body language and and see what's going on. Um, and not, uh, I'd rather not just do it on the phone. I like to see them if possible. Yeah. What additional advice do you have for voiceover people? You've been you've been doing this business a long time. Worked with a lot of great people. What what is the most important thing for for you know, in your opinion, what a voice actor should have? The first thing on the list. <laughs> that, that's I'm not that's at question the list. number six, and then six. It's six. We're running out of. Uh, and it's tomorrow questions. almost. So. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Just getting hard time. No, no, no. The real thing. The real thing is, you need to have a passion. I, I think everybody knows me and knows Dan and knows George. We are very passionate about what we do. We're crazy, but we're passionate. Mm -hmm. You know. Why I'm obsessed to take somebody's demo that they send me, take the pops out and send it back is is insane. Um, I just want to make sound better. I want people. I want voiceover people who have potential to get the work, to have the tools that they need. You need good tools. You need. You need uh, so you need. You need to have passion. And un unfortunately, you can't teach passion. Maybe if somebody tries doing voiceover and they like it. They may, you know, that may accelerate, and they may uh, get passionate about it. They may love going into the studio, and all that. Um, learn to talent needs to learn to read and not sound like they're reading. That's the big pretty skill. basic uh, there. I'd say yeah, it's basic, but it, you'd be amazed. You know, it, yeah, you'd be amazed. The first thing they come, and what's so funny is in conversation they sound wonderful. You can have a great conversation. Everybody's got a nice melody going on. Their pacing is just right. You put a script in front of them, and what happens? They start following the rules that they've been taught by the coaches. Okay, when you get to this word, you got to emphasize. You here, you have to smile. And they've marked up their script in such a way that they can't have the flow to make it conversational. They get hung up on how they've marked their script or... Speech pathologist told them something that they they're hung up on how to you know mm, yeah, use right. your siblings or something and then and then they lose their fluidity right um, so that, that's a that's a hang up uh, you need to have determination you're gonna make it in this business you're gonna try just as hard as Dan and George and me and Liz and everybody <laughs> and especially you know, Liz. Especially Liz, you know, I, I, I don't know if Liz, I don't think Liz would mind if I say this. Uh, we were at, a, we were at a, an idea party, and she said that she never auditions for long format work. In, in, the, in the way that it's old school, clients just call her up and say, well, we got another job. Loyal clients. It's uh, something else that's missing from the equation. Wow. So, so Liz has, God bless her. She has a good amount of work. Now, Trish the Dish said the same thing about uh, commercial work. She doesn't audition. She just has enough clients that call her up and say, oh, we got another spot, you know, you know just here's your script. So, we, so that's a little bit of something. So you need your determination. Um, you need a thick skin because whatever the ratio used to be of how many spots you audition for, versus how many you get probably used to be 20 to 1 now it's maybe it's 100 to 1 depending on who you are right. people sent in thousands of audit. they're sitting there waiting for their voice 1 2 3 and voices.com and VO planet and then they jump and they you know but only one person can get it so it's nothing personal have a thick skin and you need a great home studio and I know two guys or I know three guys but I'll just say I know two guys <laughs> <laughs> sitting in front of me on the on the monitor who are experts uh, at, at creating your home studio uh, because in today's voiceover you don't get called into somebody else's studio much anymore yeah it, do, Dan, do you what do people ever hire you outside of your own home studio? I think it's happened once in the last year, and it's just because a situation. But most of the time, 
I convinced them that you know it's going to sound good coming out of here, and they've never complained. If they're local and they want to see you and have a visit, see, you know, I, I again, I was in the studio in New York City, and we had voiceover people's co- people coming and going, and we had Uncle Roy's coffee and bagels and Danish and all the whole. That was the show, and everybody would come for a visit, and you shake their hand and pat them on the back, and you know, all of that's missing. We'll see if we can rekindle some of that. Uh, you know. Uh, we talked about you need a great demo and you need to get some really great marketing ideas for yourself. What's your what's your shtick? <laughs> a song from Gypsy. You gotta have a gimmick. All right. So <laughs> I don't have favorites. a handle I don't have a handlebar mustache. You know, but everybody has their own their own thing. See that? And if you don't some have people, a thing, get one. That's right. I'm don't be the thing it. if you ain't got that thing, yeah, you know. I'm working on that. I need to get a thing. I don't have a yeah. thing. What's my thing? No, your your name alone, George, is yeah. Is, uh, that's that's your reputation by your name. Your work is your uh, is your credibility. Your your um, your lineage. You know your your. I don't know <laughs> what am I trying to do there? <laughs> you know? and um, I think I think that officially um, does the list. Well, I, it, I guess it, it people does. aren't bored because they're still asking questions. Oh, um, yeah. We had another one from Can- yeah, Devox and Susan both asked. Yeah. Um, well, you see the question because I don't see it right now, Dan. Oh, it was what are the trends in oh. demos today? Is there is there something different? You know, is there something that is like you know that is taking the industry by storm that people should really pay attention to and what the what producers are looking for in demos. Just pay attention to what is currently on the air, and if you know if you're about to do your demo and you see something that's on the air, I think it's okay. I don't mean to take the Geico spot and transcribe it and say 15 minutes could save you, you know, hundreds of dollars. I don't mean that because we know who that is. We know that's not you. But listen to the trends and emulate the trends. I don't think there. I don't. I can't swear. There was a point when the economy uh, went bad that we shied away from uh, from um, financial spots. We we did, weren't putting them on demos because you know the economy was gone. And what do you sell in there? Um, I don't. I don't know that there's a trend. The trend is the trend is conversational, as we all know. The trend is not big announcer voices anymore yeah well roy it's 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 great having you with us I, i'm going to tell you what we need you to stay with us because oh. we, we we want you to stay out for our last segment because we have a fun question that you know we want to show everybody or play for everybody but anyway we'll take a little break and uh we'll be right back and uh thanks for being I gotta with go us back to, i gotta polish this thing up some more. <laughs> El Dorado Recording Services. Randy Thomas chiming in. This is Alex Verdi. Hi, this is Bill Ratner in Los Angeles. Hi, this is Scott Rummel here in Yorba Linda, California. Hi, my name is Rick Wasserman. Hi, this is Tom Kane. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. Hi, my name is Zurich. Hi, I'm Mary McKittrick. Hi, I'm Peter McHugh. I was turned on to George by none other than Don LaFontaine, who always swore by his help. George is absolutely awesome. ISDN, Source Connect, Phone Patch, FTP, you name it, George has set it up. It's really the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel free. Free, safe, fearless, like anything is possible in here. Unless you like to look for opportunities to waste time, call George. And he did all of that, long distance over the phone and the internet. I'm very happy with George and uh, I cherish I've got my travel kit, I got my Source Connect, I've got it all going on, thanks to you. Thanks, George. You make it easy. VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. 
VoiceOver Extra, the voiceover industry's online news, education, and resource center 24-7. Hundreds, probably thousands of free how-to articles for voiceover success, ranging from home studio to voice acting to business. A free voiceover industry directory, calendar of industry events, resource links, a store, and much more. Bi-monthly webinars on all topics of voiceover, free subscriptions to newsletters, reports, announcements, daily news, and features at voiceoverextra.com. This is East West Audio Body Shop with Dan Leonard in the East and George Whittem in the West. Two guys I love spending Sunday nights with. Oh, and we love spending Sunday night with you. And another person we like spending time with when he's with us is our great friend Harlan Hogan and a great place to go to get the best and the best selected equipment for you in voiceover is voiceoveressentials.com. That's Harlan's uh, store. He's got some great stuff over there. Uh, of course, the VO1A mic, which uh, highly touted, great microphone, great price point on it. Uh, right now, we, one of the things that's really hot, and because I actually have one, and uh, George, I, you had one. We, I've got people one People wanted them one. Yeah, when we were over at, at Voice 2012, people were really wanted these. The, the yeah. Voice, uh, the the Harlan Hogan Porta Studio, Porta Booth Plus, the Porta Booth Plus, Porta Booth Plus. This is a huge improvement over that cube you would buy at Target. And they're uh, really good when you fill them up with uh, liquor bottles. Those little yes. uh, individual. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's easy to assemble, it's easy to disassemble, but the best part is is it sounds great. I had it with me when I was in Philadelphia and I see I I I would this hotel I was in it had these huge closets in it. You throw up a couple of duvets, threw this thing in there. Client couldn't tell wow. the difference. I love it. So uh normally I wouldn't do that, but you know, I, I like to annoy my wife with having work on the road, so I uh, I had it with me there. Paid but, for the trip. It did. It actually did. Well, at least for the hotel room that night. Uh, anyway, Porta Booth Plus, great unit. If you're looking for portable studio stuff, that's the thing to use. And uh, and it comes from the guy who invented it. And also will remind you to unplug the Coke machine in the hall in the hotel. Anyway, thanks, Harlan. You're a great friend. And thanks for supporting us here on East West Audio Body Shop. Yes, and thank you to his lovely helper, too, who's in the photographs. <laughs> whose name escapes us at the moment. Why can't I remember her name right now? I don't know. It's Aura, your, you're trying to forget kill me. Aura, Aura, Aura Lex. It's right there. No, no, yeah, Aura, Aura it's, Lex. Pam something or other. Oh, no, I can't remember. Why would I bring that up and not remember the name? I remember the know. name first, then bring yep, up. It's kind of like be. telling the joke without remembering the punchline. That's right. <laughs> I for, Forgive us, but uh, okay. anyway. She's, All right. It's a great team over there at VoiceOver great, Essentials. Great, great over-the-shoulder shot there. Okay, anyway. Thanks, Harlan. Thanks, VoiceOverEssentials.com. You the man. Yes. Okay. Well, what's the next on our agenda here? Uh, well, we do well, have Royce, a question. We do have a – you guys have to hear this question. And, uh, and the three of us are going to have a riot answering it. So why don't you roll the question of the week that was on our voicemail, George? All right. You got it. Let me just find it because I left that, I left that window. So let's go back. Okay. To right. the right window where that question is, and let me push a couple buttons. Ow, my eye! And uh, here we go. Yes, my question is: What is the basic cost to set up a home studio, and what are um, what would a person need to set a home studio up? Um, this is my question. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Straightforward question from I, from anonymous. Yeah, anonymous. Yeah, might be good that it was anonymous. Um, how much does it cost? Well, how much are you willing to spend? I think is the first question there. Uh, it does. To, if you're just starting out, you do not need to spend a fortune uh, because chances are you're not going to be getting a lot of work out of that studio. You have to learn how to use it. And getting the best stuff and expensive stuff to start off with is going to make you who are not quite ready sound like you're not quite ready really good. 
Yeah, right. I, I, it's probably the best way to describe that. You don't go out and buy a U87 for a, a home studio because, one, you're going to hear people skateboarding out in front of your house, and two, uh, it's you, you don't know how to use it yet. You get good equipment by working to get good equipment. You don't get good equipment to get work. I Do mean, once would, you're getting a lot of work. Yeah. To, I, mean, I would I, shy away from a Samson CO1 one, USB mic. Yeah. yeah because when that. you said hiss, for some the, reason, the king of hiss. It it seems to be the king of hiss. Yeah, the Samsung G Track also, which I ha- probably has the same guts. The G Track, pretty noisy. Uh, the Blue Ball. Ugh. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to talk too badly because the other stuff they make is really good. Yeah, no, no, they have some great stuff. But let's be honest, the Blue Ball was one of the first Blue Ball. It was the second. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> Sorry, guys. The <laughs> Blue yeah. Snow. It was white. It was white. Now yeah. they got them in silver and blue. And the Blue and, Snowball was really one of the early USB microphones. I, I got to give it props. The real, the real answer is to ask one of the three of us for advice as to what. Yeah. To, as what mic would be a good starter. Uh, you I'll, know. I'll just tell you what I, I've put together packages with US with uh, BSW, and you know we've we've tried to package this to make it easy for people to get started. But I generally find that when I get a referral from a coach that says, okay, this person is ready to have a home studio, at least some place to record auditions to send yep. out, you know, at, in the middle of the night when it's quiet, that kind of thing. I generally recommend a, a wind of about 800 to to $1,000 for equipment. This is assuming you already have a, um, a, a, a computer. Com- computer, yeah. Um, and not just equipment also, but expertise. And it should be a balance of like uh, equipment to uh, professional advice, I think. Um, yeah. You know, because getting all getting the best equipment in the, in the business, then not learning how to use it correctly up front, or getting the wrong software, and then then you know paying for it in hours and days and months of of you know searching online trying to find answers. That's just not money well spent. Spend it on expertise and the equipment, or even You're hire gonna- the expertise to tell you what equipment you should get. You're not going to learn Pro Tools by going on YouTube and... <laughs> no. You're just not. You can Might pick up a tips. Rap. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can pick up tips. I mean, there's a lot of really yeah. good stuff on YouTube. Don't get us wrong. But uh, right. yeah. yeah, don't rely on that as your primary coaching tool. No. You've got to have an expert who really show you how. But 95% of it is your room acoustics, guys. A lot of it uh, is. I'd say, yeah, it's like 80% is room acoustics. 10% more is mic technique. And you know maybe the last ten percent, you know, is the your, gear. Is your talent? It's well, your yeah, talent. And slide the talent in there somewhere. Yeah, it's true. True. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it it's it's not that much, guys. And like I say, you don't get great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. Learn the acoustics. Get yourself a fairly good microphone. Anything over two hundred dollars generally is going to be pretty good. If you get a USB microphone, get one of the newer ones. We were talking about the the Epigee mic, which yeah. is a great USB mic, uh, and it works with your iPad and your iPhone. And uh, and I and I think Blue is coming out with one soon too with the yeah. uh, the Spark Digital. Spark Digital. And, you know, you know, you guys are setting up, you know, your 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 business, and so this is the investment. It's not a right. gigantic amount. To start a business, a thousand dollars, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. That's uh, that's very reasonable, in my opinion. Oh, yep. gosh, especially compared to ten, fifteen years ago. I mean, come oh, yeah. on. Um, there's, my garage uh, is full of all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> other question that came into the chat room, and I think Dan and I worked on this a little bit, but uh, this kind of kicked off that whole M- MI sibilant question. But it's still a good question. Um, I use SoundForge. And I can't find a de-esser pl- plug-in for it. Oh, right, the de-esser question. Can you guys recommend anything? I mean, I I don't know if he's using SoundForge Audio Studio or the full-blown SoundForge. I think full-blown SoundForge supports VST. Do you know, Roy? Uh, if I launch mine, I could tell you. I, I think it supports VST. And if it does, VST is by far the, the easiest, uh, you know, format of plug-in to find, you know, uh, plug-ins for, yeah. especially free ones. And I've had success in the past of using the Spitfish, something called Spitfish as a as a uh, processing. I've seen that one plug in for DSing, but I also find that just the appropriate amount of EQ notch at just the right frequency range gets you about it. Pretty much does the job of a DSer unless you really have severe issues. And then if you do, you should probably be fixing the problem elsewhere, not just trying to band aid it over, but you know, change your mic technique, change your mic, change your 
delivery technique, you know, get a coach um, to coach Absolutely. you out of that. But um, um, yeah, Spitfish is one that I've, over the years, when some of you have asked me for one, that's the one that I've found. And I'm pretty sure I used it, uh, actually used it with uh, SoundForge for one of my clients. So you could try that one out. And I'm sure some other have some ideas. It's yeah. no Spitfish is not Mac only. Think about it. If it was, it wouldn't work with SoundForge. Good point. Uh, be, yeah. Being Windows only, um, I think they have Mac and Windows versions of it. Um, there are no DSers built into Twisted Wave, and because uh, Twisted Wave just uses the plugins that uh, the audio units that uh, Mac comes with, and they don't have a DSer. I've never really seemed to miss it. I just find if you do the right EQ in the right way, it pretty much takes care of it, and then the rest deal you deal with with mic technique. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I have found that you know usually sibilance occurs at very specific you know frequencies, and if you can just dial those back a little bit, that usually will handle it too. Right. I know in Adobe Adobe Audition uh, CS five and six, uh, there's there's deesser programs in there too, yeah. and uh, it's it's pretty easy. We, once you can learn equalization curves, it's not too hard to take that out, and you don't need something real sophisticated. Roy, what do you may- think? It also may be uh, a consideration when choosing a microphone because certain microphones are going to be a little too harsh and too bright so that if the person has knows that they have a sibilance uh, issue, you may not want to get uh, one of these, uh, don't want to badmouth any manufacturer, but, you know, one of these um, cheaper mics mm-hmm. uh, right. because they, I own a, I, I love my studio project C1. But it was advertised as an 87 with too much highs on it, and, and that's right. It's just way too much top end. So I, you know, I roll it off, and right. then and then I then it sounds great. Right. But if you've got if you have some sibilance issues, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that mic. Yeah, that's the reason why I don't reckon a four, recommend a 416 for a lot of women's voices also because it really or, accentuates top end. Yeah, or a 414, an AKG 414 also mm-hmm. is a little uh, on the bright side. Mm-hmm. Um, but if again, you have a good DS, sir. again, it's EQ. I mean, you can get a lot out of almost any mic with the proper EQ settings. So don't, you know, if you've already invested all this money in a setup, and if all we need to do is make a tiny EQ tweak to, to you know, yeah. take out that S, don't go spending more money yet. Just or if, don't need to. Or if you have a vocal strip that has a good DS or in it, that I would do live. Just make sure that it's not turning the S's into THs. Uh, uh, like from you know, to that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, because if you've got it on Max or you know some of them, when it's really processing heavily, will turn the S's into THs. Right. Uh, but if you see, you know, if you see that the DSer is kicking and it sounds clean, do a test recording, play it back. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, that I would print live. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't yeah. necessarily rely on post. Yeah. Well, like. Well, well, I yep. you know I I think that you know as T. S. Eliot once said, uh, this is going to bring this uh, to to an end oh, with got, a whimper instead of a bang. I got one last question. Though. One question. All righty. Yeah. One last one to, to really put a cherry on top. Oh, fabulous! Is yeah. a mic po- is a mic mate pro considered a tube preamp? <laughs> well, it looks like a tube. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> tube shape. It's tube shape. Somebody yeah. asked that on YouTube on one of our videos. That was a comment. <laughs> And uh, oh, I had to I had to throw that one out yeah, there. Thank you for throwing that in. Yeah, the no, answer is no. No, no, no it's not. not. A, it's not a tube. And and actually, guys, forget about the tubes. It's a gimmick. From it's, my point of view, it's a gimmick you... in a home voiceover studio. The, the yeah. Apex Two Thirty. It's got three knobs that say tube sound. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've well, we've gone into, we, we've talked about tube preamps in the past. We don't need to drag over that one again. Uh, yeah, search on uh, search on our website. You'll find that episode in our in our lovely show notes provided by Jason Lawson every yes. week. Thank you for that, Jason. And speaking of people who are helping out the show, we anybody want to help us with production? Anybody yeah. want to help with booking uh, booking guests? Uh, anybody want to be like a, a field reporter for us, like yeah. a man on the street? Yeah, because we actually want to have a contest with this. Yeah. We want you send us in your videos of you doing. Something voiceover related where you can be a correspondent on our show. Right. You know, just add another another fun element into what we do here on East West Audio Body Shop. Exactly. Get you all involved and have some fun. But we'll we'll send in your videos and we'll put them on and we'll let everybody vote who should be our our official field. on on in the field uh, correspondent. And remember when you're in the field to watch where you step. 
<laughs> is that also known as a segment producer? Yeah, it would or be. Not. Yeah, a, pa- a package are, producer. Yeah, there are field mines out there. I hear <laughs> and field and field mice. <laughs> exactly. They did that too. Right? Yes. <laughs> so field yeah, the, yeah. Let's. We'll, we'll stay tuned. We'll uh, put something more formal about that on our uh, on our website and on Facebook, so you guys know what we want to do. But I think uh, yeah, if you want to make like a video, like up to three minutes, two to three minutes in length. Um, and just uh, supply it on some topic that you know something about, and we'll just we'll get a few and see if anybody wants to start, uh, you know, contributing. I think it'd be yeah. a lot of fun. And like maybe in- they should go to Comic Con or something and see if they can find some voice actors. Uh, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah, cool. I love it. You know, all those yeah. conferences. It's not possible for us to go to every conference out there. So if anybody is going to some of these cool conferences, we can't go to. You know, go out there and, you know, cut together some video. Use your iPhone, your iPod. The video quality on the iPod, iPhone and iPod are amazing. Well, look, I mean, look what we did at, at, at Voice 2012. Yeah, all that video you saw when we were at walking the around party. at the garden party, and all that was I, iPod Touch. Wow. You know, I mean, it really is quite good for what it is, you know. And, uh, and even actually a lot of that, you're actually hearing the mic on the iPod Touch. The wireless Absolutely. mic that Dan was holding wasn't even working for a good section of that. <laughs> so <laughs> you were hearing yeah. the mic on that thing. I mean, that's really an amazing piece of technology. So it's not hard to make something usable and, uh, you know, have fun with it. And uh, we'll st- stay tuned. We'll tell you how to submit the, the audio and the video. Yeah. There's, there's what everybody looks like on there anyway. Exactly. Oh. It's, uh, cool. yeah. I can see my house from here. I know. I can see Ohio, Columbus. I think we should put anyway. this on a fork. What do you say? That's right. I I think it's done for for now. But Roy, we gave you an hour here, and we could go for another four or five hours. We totally we'll do, could. We'll do, it, we'll do another one. Yeah, you, know, you know what a, I give it a rest, and then I'll come back. Yeah, you, you know what I think I want to do, Roy. I I think yeah. you know because you you and I are going to work on my new demo. Maybe okay. we should document how we do my new demo, so people okay. can see how you work and how it really should be done. Gary. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I think that'd be cool. I think that'd be yeah. really cool, actually. I'd like to cool. watch that. Yeah. Okay. Me too. I like that idea. All right. Well, thanks for being with us tonight. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. This was fun. All was right. What do we and have? How to, many, do we, now, how many people? How many people were on there? What was the grand total? I think we had forty-five live, 45 but there'll be hundreds one. of thousands that will be joining us hundreds later. Hundreds of thousands. Like, that's that's pretty good that's probably second to the june foray uh episode live right <laughs> yeah yeah it's up there june was our top viewed live show to date and we had about 80 yeah. live viewers yeah that was a lot of fun and Pe- lot. people reported tasting cornflakes and tricks as they were watching exactly it was very strange very interesting <laughs> anchors came out of that exactly. anyway, who, do, who do we have on for next week george do we have any plans on that yet remember that part where i said anybody interested in uh helping us book guests uh <laughs> yes hint hint has anybody has anybody chimed in on on uh, chat yet to uh, volunteer <laughs> no i haven't seen through. much of that yet, look but... through nobody's yeah. climbing over each other well we will have something I've, fabulous next i week have a uh, a pool of people as you can imagine all the clients i've worked with over the years i've got quite a a pool so we'll see what we can find i've also i think it'd be fun to uh, do um a hangout once a month you know that hangout show that i've done the last yeah. couple of times when dan was tied up sort of like open line friday yeah what if we just like once a month for the summer and maybe we'll see how it goes but we'll do a hangout and if roy you want to be in a hangout you can be there you know it's it's much more less it's much less formal uh there's no you this know, is formal it's, yeah <laughs> it's even less formal up. than this <laughs> believe me <laughs> but uh it's it's very loose and fun and uh casual and we just talk about what uh people want to talk about so and it makes it more interesting because we can have a lot more people involved in the conversation. I think we can have up to 10 people uh, on Google Hangouts at the same time. Really? That would be can cool. I, can I give out my uh, my uh, email address in case anybody wants to, anybody who didn't get to ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, it's it's on the no. bottom of the screen, your website, but also give out your email address. Yes, it's antland, A-N-T-L-A-N-D, prods, P-R-O-D-S, at the embarrassing AOL.com. <laughs> still at AOL? I know. Well, I have a Gmail, but it, I only check it because George writes me there. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, I think that's going to do it for this week, guys. Thanks again for, for joining us, and thanks uh, to uh, 
to Uncle Roy, Roy Yokelson, right. for being our guest tonight. And uh, next week, it'll be just as great. Well, maybe not without Roy. It won't no. be so great, but uh, well, no, it'll be, be fabulous. Watching. Yeah, there you go. Join us every week. Get us get in the chat room there. I'm sure people love yeah. to have you there. Oh, cool. And uh, let's see. So next week, Sunday night. Stay tuned. We'll let you know. It's going to be somebody good. I promise. We, we always do. We always do. <laughs> anyway. I'm Dan Leonard in the East, along with Roy Yokelson, who's also in the East. And George, I'm, you're outnumbered over here. I'm sorry. Yeah, really. George Whittem in the West. And together we are East-West East West Audio, Audio Body, Body Shop. Shop. Have a great night, everybody. Happy Canada Day and happy Fourth of July, folks. Happy Fourth night, of July. everybody. <laughs>